goes in. They're a little bit damaged, aren't they? They look like they've been hacked by two drawers to get the, <laughs> to get the window. Yeah, so yeah, the frames are original. Yeah. With the, with the building. Um, so the outside box frames, and then the sashes themselves look good. Very original as well. They got, if you notice, there's no horns on the bottom of them. Right. Because the horns hold the glass in, so they, um. you know, it was changed. The design was changed, sort of in the, in the sort of later Victorian period. And so the, so the horns were introduced to take the bigger glass, so you can tell that they're original, right. original windows to the building. The glass is it? So the glass is of a size. Then it? Look, it looks like um, greenhouse yeah. glass. I was going to say. Really, sort of thin, poor quality. Yeah. Um, that whole sash is swayed in the wind, actually. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, the lovely beaded detail. There's obviously no ropes or pulleys left in it now. Yeah. So they've gone. Um, so what we'll do with them, we'll fix, we'll fix them back up, restore the sashes, save them, fix the top sash in position. Yeah, a poor man's sash. Yeah, and then create it into a poor man's sash. Yeah. Um, so they'll have a working window, which obviously yeah. won't, won't fall out. And, yes. Uh, it's anyway, hopefully. And we've got two left, that's all that's left. So the frames are still on all of them, all the windows all around the building. Yeah. And the date is around sort of 1820s, 1830s. Um, so the frames are all still there. And then at, well, as they fell apart, the demise of the timber and they fell out, they dropped the size of the window and they just put these little cheap sort of um, placement sashes in there. Yeah. And to fill the hole. And they, they've done a job, obviously, in the Yeah. But it's quite a nice challenge for the for the students to repair yeah. the box sash, which I bet there's many of those left in yeah. Sierra Leone, to be honest. And then this corrugated bit, would, did you say, would, what would you call that in terms? Oh, it's just a shelter, really. Like a shelter, like yeah. a runoff, basically. Yeah, so water comes off the roof, hits that, yeah. shoots it off, hits this lower one, and then shoots it away from the building, and yeah. it's just a way of getting the water away from the building as quick as possible. That top one, other than the tin, looks in reasonable condition now, yeah. yeah. So we did yeah. save quite a lot of that and uh, the original paneling boarding which is on the side with the beautiful detail on it yeah. and this elevation is in more poor condition but the rest I know this was quite, it's quite good yeah and then very repairable it's just be the, but the, the way that it's gonna the, the bead detail runs everywhere though it runs on yeah. the frames of the windows and the shutters it runs on the internal doors it runs on the rafters it runs on the internal stud work it's yeah. uh, Beading is everywhere you look inside mm -hmm. the building. It's quite a grand building, really. So they, they must have had a lot of money when they built this place. Yes. They must have had a lot of money yeah. because this wouldn't have been cheap to build. No, as so you must say, have been of great importance. It must have all been done by hand. Oh yeah, definitely yeah. done by hand. Yeah. yeah. Around that time, and um, and it's it's quite interesting because this bead detail it comes from the UK, so it looks like the joinery side of it. It's yeah. been made with a, with a British sort of uh, tint on it then. Yeah. So this is very sort of, in Wales, this is everywhere in Cerdigion and Pembrokeshire and Carmarthenshire. And it's a real sort of fine detail to the century detail. Yeah. Which was all done with hand paint. And um, so yeah. I would imagine it was the same here because mm -hmm. the, the timings sort of way up of when this detail was in the UK to when this house was built. Yeah. And then the beams in the cellar. They're yeah. really damaged. Yeah. Also, probably the most integral part of the building. Yeah. It's, it's, there's a history of the whole building having too much damage. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's where they've had leaks in the ceiling. Um, the water scored from via the roofs with the ceilings, softened the ends of the timbers, and then the termites couldn't get um, access into the soft timber. Once they're into the soft timber, then they're away. Yeah. And you, you do notice inside that where the Two of my damages has gone through the main beams and two of the main structural beams which run from wall to wall outside the whole within the whole structure yeah. other than the outside wall so totally rotten and of course we can't find that timber yeah. anymore because it's nobody's like restoring Leone, nobody's yeah. restoring buildings in Sierra Leone for us at the moment I believe yeah. um, so that timber isn't accessible um, so we can't get anything of the, the same thickness but you know but we said we managed to find some in a school in the Polytechnic which uh, right. recycle timbers yeah. which uh, we're hoping to to use to, to strengthen the the, the ceiling the, 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 the floor to hold yeah. the rest of the building up um, but you can see just up here where this little wall plate is and you can see the stud work which is coming up sections of the panel where the, the turnouts have gone straight through it and you've got a, a 
so much work to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's just, yeah, we've got a bit too much damage. Really. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of weather damage and obviously sun, the great yeah. heat. But the timber's quite think, interesting, there's a lot of timber species. Do you think species. that's why this timber on this side is so damaged? Is it sun exposure? I think so, yeah. yeah I think and so. are we going to take these down? Some of them. And try and do, redo at least some of them? Yeah, though I think the bottom section to yeah. the underside of the window is definitely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a good idea. You can actually see, I, it may well have been before that uh, that shelter was built, the water was running down, because you see this one board is thinned out yeah. really badly. Yeah. And I, it could well have been water run off, yeah. it's just worn the board down, drying, getting wet, drying, getting wet, and then obviously splitting and breaking down. But the, t the timbers are quite interesting here as well, because it's, um, it's like a redwood, um, which is, seems to be everywhere, like a beech wood, I think it's called. Right. And then in, internally there's a bit of Iroko and there's a bit of mahogany. And the mahogany mm. flooring has no termite damage yeah. in it. But yet the redwood and the beech wood is absolutely riddled with termite damage. Yeah. So it's quite, and some of the painted surfaces have survived longer than the untreated surfaces, mm. which is quite an interesting detail, which I, I have heard of before. Yeah. And with the, the scaffolding, mm. uh, we're going to be able to get up onto the roof yes. and check the check the condition of, of that. Yeah, we, we yeah. have um, a two, probably a, th a, th a two or a three lift scaffold. One lift to get us up to the beginning of the board so we can work on the boards and the windows. And then the next one we'll go up with the, with the, the, the shelter is there to get us access up onto the top. And then we might mm. have to have another one on the gable end to get us up right up onto the ridge to see what the tin is looking like but from the damage inside I would imagine the tin is just it's just worn away and gone thin and mm. broken through its surface mm. and tin is readily available in Sierra Leone I've seen it in many places um, so we can replace that uh, if, if we need to in, in places mm. hopefully it won't be too bad but um, you can see up here now the way it's, it's worn yeah, straight it's through worn away and that yeah. is where the the, the, it is, the damage is at its yeah. worst, yeah. So it's, yeah, I think we're gonna have a bit of work on the roof. Mm. And of course, once the roof, the tin is off, we can actually have a look then of what the, the timber yeah. is like, because I have no idea what the timber's like in yeah. the roof yet. So we've got a fair idea of the structure um, and a fair idea of the, the, the nice stuff then on the mm. outside, what condition that's in, but the actual roof, we've got we no idea. But it, up, yeah. Termite damage is worse on the first floor. And mm. then a little bit better, not, not so bad on the second floor. So, yeah. hoping by the time we get up to the roof, it's mm. limited to my damage. Um, just probably a bit of wet rot where the, where the timbers have just yeah, mm. literally been dried and soaked, dried and soaked, and mm. broken down. Yeah. So, the students are going to be able to have a go at some really varied skills in terms of working a bit on the roof and on the windows and also those beams inside the house yeah. so yeah really there's a varied skill really. crucial yeah. work but yeah it, it, there's so much a, a variation that you have here really. yeah because you can go from structural work which is quite you know like um, timber framing and, mm. or right down to fine joinery like these shutters you know and this is fine joinery there's no argument about that if that was in the UK that would be praised as, mm. as yeah. a wonderful piece of joinery and it'll be looked after, so it, it, they are lovely bits of, bits of joinery throughout the building. The main lounge is, is beautiful, mm -hmm. the way the, the, the money that they've spent in there and making it highly decorated. So it, there, there are different skills that you can learn from, like mm -hmm. you say, from timber framing. We've got external boarding, we've got restoration of windows, we've got restoration of doors, restoration of shutters, door frames, and even down to some of the the porch section of the building is quite interesting because it's all highly decorated in there with the most beautiful rafters which are all got this wonderful bead running on it mm -hmm. and then covered in sarkin boards which again have got all the beads on mm -hmm. so it's, it's really complicated but really fine joinery in yeah. some respects yeah. which yeah. is unusually don't usually find it in many buildings yeah so it's a uh, there's a range of things that the yeah. students can all have a go at. They can have a lot of work to do. <laughs> uh, a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. yeah Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's an exciting project. Yeah. And the prospects of working on something. You know, if I was an apprentice coming to work on this, yeah. I'd be over the moon. Yeah. Because there's so much you can learn and 
and test your skills against. And having a taster of it these first two weeks with your guidance, hopefully means that they'll be able to continue this work. But that's, yeah, After hopefully that will be the, the cases leaving something behind that they can follow. Yes. Yeah. Giving them a taste of everything. So yeah. teach them about the frame inside so they can learn how to cut joints into framing and how to repair it. Yeah. But then also teach them how to splice the bits of timber into a fine yeah. piece of joinery. So you're going from the rough kind of mm -hmm. element to the fine element and getting everything in between. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's teaching them the range of skills in the fortnight that we have. Yes. Um, but then arming them with the knowledge of a lifetime then. Absolutely.